Stocks finished mixed on Friday, which added to the woes of the stock market. This culminated in three consecutive weeks of losses. The S&P 500 index, SPY, was flat, and the Nasdaq 100 index, QQQ, closed down minus 0.14%. Thus, the S&P 500 slid to a six-week low low and the Nasdaq 100 plummeted to a two-month low. So where to from here? What are the major headwinds facing stocks now that the earnings season is nearing a close? Remaining on the earnings front this week, are NVIDIA, NVDA, Deer, De, Dick Sporting Goods, DKS, and Snowflake, Snow. Their earnings breakdown will be scrutinized, in particular NVDA. Remember earlier in 2023 NVDA set the stock markets alight with management's forward projections. Okay, there is strong demand for NVDA's AI processors. Despite this several analysts and investors expect that NVDA could provide weak earnings projections. This is not so much an NVDA problem but a problem with suppliers. Several suppliers have provided dismal forecasts. Keep in mind the poor results and guidance from the supplier SMCI. Post results the stock fell 23%. Investors have concerns that the semiconductor maker could provide poor profit guidance. If this is the case then watch out, the NVDA price could come under serious pressure. NVDA is a bellwether stock. If the NVDA stock price comes under pressure the US stock markets will be subject to more than three weeks of losses. I would break the current headwinds down to three main gusts of wind. Some are more permanent concerns than others. Thus the US markets are being buffeted even rocked by a perfect storm. The three main gusts of wind are increasing interest rates and worsening data in China. All combined with weak summer liquidity and no clear driving sentiment post earnings. Stocks fell on Friday as concerns about China's economy and rising global interest rates impacted market mood. However, equities regained most of their losses and finished neutral. Bonds yields remained lower throughout the day. This prompted a short covering surge in stocks on Friday afternoon. Brokers have warned that U.S. shares could fall another 55 to 10 percent. If China's economic crisis frightens global investors and bond yields rise. In China, the overall strategy seems to be increase lending. The Chinese central bank and financial authorities met with bank executives again. This was to urge them to increase lending to promote a recovery. The conference also saw policymakers call for mortgage policy modifications and optimization. This all indicated growing anxiety about the domestic economy. Global stock managers expect pain as China's sharp slowdown hurts companies that depend on it. Investors are de-risking after China's growth projection was cut. This has reflections of Japanese stocks in the late 80s. Then the government encouraged investors to buy stocks. This was in reaction to the October crash in 1987. It worked for a while, until around 1992, and then caused 30 years plus of pain. Interest rates. The story on short-term interest rates has been discussed at length. Market economists are discounting at 10% probability a plus 25 BP rate rise at the September 20th FOMC meeting. Then at the November 1st FOMC meeting plus 25 BP rate hike at a 36% probability. Okay but the real action to impact stocks will be at the long end of the US yield curve. At present the US yield curve is inverted. This will change. Long-term interest rates are set to rise. In the end the yield curve will normalize. Despite current sentiment, at some point the Fed will cut the Fed funds rate. By some point, the time horizon is over the next two years. For sure, the Fed will probably reassert its commitment to keep interest rates high. Even for a protracted period to prevent inflation from escalating. So, cutting rates is still way off, thus at least two years. This week economists will evaluate global flash PMI prints. Also US durable goods orders and European sentiment indicators early in the week. But impacting stocks and the equity market risk premium is the long end of the yield curve. Long-term rates are set to rise. Impacting the long end would be receding concerns over a recession. More importantly will be with long-run unwinding of the Fed's balance sheet or quantitative tightening. Global bond yields on Friday moved lower. The 10-year T-note yield fell minus 2.1 BP to 4.253%, while 10-year German Bund yield fell minus 8.7 BP to 2.622% and the 10-year UK gilt yield fell minus 7.1 BP to 4.675%. Overseas stock markets Friday settled lower. The Euro stocks 50 closed down minus 0.35%. China's Shanghai Composite Index closed down minus 1.00%. Japan's Nikkei Stock Index closed down minus 0.55%. All the graphs in this video are by bar chart. If you are thinking of subscribing to bar chart, my affiliate link is in the comments.
Also included are my affiliate links to the online brokers, eToro, First Trade, and FX Primus. These videos, give a quick overview of the US stock markets with a couple of stock ideas. Issued on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays based on the underlying blog. Visit my blog site www.smartestdata.blog. If you like these videos, hit like and subscribe, it really does help the channel. See you in the next video.